Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is the voice of uh, Professor Peter Wateva Kuntai in the United States. Welcome back to uh, Mako Language Tutor. Today, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be talking about uh, the role of adjectives in, uh, in effective communication in my mother tongue. Uh, we call our mother tongue Ngie Mkoke. Ngieke is uh, language, and Muko is the, the name of my village. So well, welcome again to this platform. Uh, I would like to get started, uh, ladies and gentlemen, dear listeners out there. I would like to uh, begin with uh, the, the very basics. What is an adjective? An adjective is a word that describes a person a place or a thing. And I want to underscore, uh, good friends, that when we talk about things, we're also thinking about ideas because ideas could be qualified, could, could go into the category of, of nouns in, in, uh, in, in, all, in most languages, okay? So, um, like I said earlier, uh, an adjective could be, uh, could, you know, defined as a word that describes a person, a place, or or a thing. So, in other words, an, an adjective is either a noun or a noun phrase that helps us to be able to communicate properly and to add more ideas to uh, whatever we're trying to to express in 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 the in the language that we're talking about here. In this case, it's in game Um. One thing I want to get started with is, is uh, the fact that um, adjectives do add meaning to, to words, uh, okay? They do, if I say, for example, uh, if in my mother, if I say matu, which is a car, uh, and I say manokiem matu, which means I have a car, that's basic, you know, the person listening to you knows you have a car. But if you added a little word like fifi, for example, which means new, and you say, you make the statement, matu fifi, okay? That word fifi, which is refer, which when translated into English, into English uh, gives you new, it adds more meaning to the word matu, which is a car. Okay, in other words, our my people also refers to matu as book, you know, book because we have book which is the one which is the aircraft. So if somebody says to you, Manokie matu, and another person says to you, Manokie matu fefe, there's clearly a distinction between the two utterances because one person, the first person just he tells you, I have a car. Okay, Makie Matu or Makie Bogo. That to me is blank. There's no additional semantics. There's nothing that adds meaning to the type of car that a person has. Uh, as whereas the second person who says, for, who says, Makie Matu Fefe, okay, he's adding meaning to it. He's telling you he has a new car. If another person comes around and says, Makie Matu Gundu, you know, Gundu means old in, in English. Kunduan gives you more meaning. The person who says to you, Mokimatu Kunduan, he's qualifying or describing the type of car that he or she, he or she has. Okay? So that's that's uh that's the role of of of, of adjectives in Gimekoko, ladies and gentlemen. Mokimatu Fefe. I have a new car. Fefe is an adjective that qualifies the noun matu or book. Mokimatu Kunduan. Uh, I have a I have an old car, as you can see. The word uh, the word um, you know, which means old, has quite a quite a bit of meaning to the the, the noun matu. Okay, and you can go on and on and, and and add other things. You can even talk about colors. If somebody says to you, uh, matu matu kofu, for example, matu kofu. You know, that's a color. Kofu is white. Okay. So somebody says to you, uh, matu kofu. He's telling you, I have a I have a white car. If somebody says to you, Leon matu kofu, for example, he's telling you, Leon is brother. 
He's saying to you, my brother has a white car. Leona came out to go full. So as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, we can go on and multiply these examples as, as many times as we want. But this fundamental thing to retain here is that in Gimakoka, which is my mother tongue, that adjectives do add to, you know, they, too, they do add meaning to the nouns that we're talking about. And that's true for, for other languages as well. I do, I happen, God has blessed me with a linguistic mind. I do speak like eight languages internationally. And those, those adjectives function almost the same. I'm going to be talking later on about the positioning of adjectives in in, in, uh, in Gimakoka, but let's talk about the functions of uh, the function of of adjectives in my mother tongue for in the you know in the time being. So uh, so we're done with the example that has to do with cars. You can describe human beings, for example, using other adjectives. For example, if you say that if you say in Bamunka, the war war no no you know is laziness. Okay, so the noun is but when you say that's somebody who is lazy, who doesn't want to do things. Okay, who wants to sit around and you know fool around and uh, I, I wonder how those kinds of people survive. But regardless, uh, if somebody says to you, war, war, that man, that man uh is a is you know, war, war, not war, he is literally telling you that this person is is a lazy person. And so you can see that in communication. When, as soon as you add an adjective to the to the discourse, it gives you a little bit more meaning. If you say that you want to be, okay, want not be for, for example, want not be for, you're simply saying this person is a is a worker. It works, but when you say this person want not be worker, it's telling you more. It may the guy may be working, but he's a he's a pretty lazy person. So you use the word adjective worker. Uh, in order to add more meaning to the person that you're describing. I hope this is making sense, ladies and gentlemen. This My mother tongue is a pretty uh, challenging language. And so that's why I'm taking time to go slowly so that folks can understand. Another one, another example is um, um, uh, Vaka Yo, for example. Vono Vaka Yo. Va, va is, a, is, a, is a kid, okay? It's a girl. And it could in my, in my mother tongue, Va could be a girl or a boy. It's gender neutral. And so if you say von, you know, this kid, this child, von uh, yo, for example, you are literally saying this kid is, is sick, you know, this kid is sick. Um, and so you can see that this child, when you say sick, you say vaka yo, you're adding more meaning to the kid. You could have, you could simply have said, well, this vonova, vonova, for example, von no von, this kid is my kid. All right. Well, that's another story for another because this one is possession now. But if you look at possessive adjective, but this one is descriptive. We're talking about descriptive adjective today. Okay. Uh, I just gave an example. I did. I noticed that it's, it's, it has to do with possessive adjectives in my mother tongue. Because when you say von non von, if you, if you translate it into English, it gives you my, this is my child. And my in, my, in, in linguistics, is a possessive adjective, which gives, talks about ownership. But I don't want to go that there. This is uh, I'm going to go there and to uh, produce a video on possessive adjectives in Gimakoka. But today, I'm talking about descriptive adjectives, okay? So if you say, for example, von Ovaka, you're, you're literally saying, this kid is a sick child, okay? It may be sick of something. could be whatever it is. But you're telling the, your hearer that this kid is sick, of, you know, of something, okay? And so um, and so that's, uh, that's, that's what it is. Now, I want to say something that is very, very important here. And that is the fact that um, in the English language, adjectives generally precede the noun. This is important listeners, dear friends out there. In, uh, in English, um, and most of the, and in most uh, of the uh, Germanic languages, uh, adjectives precede the noun, a clean, a clean house a dirty car, a lazy man, a hardworking woman. As you can hear me you know, recite these examples, you realize that the adjectives come before. When I say precede, I mean come before. Adjectives generally come before in English. But in, in Gimakoka, the reverse is true. The reverse is true because 
you will see that um, adjectives generally come after, you know, the nouns. Okay. For example, matu is the noun, folks. Matu is the noun, or book is the noun. When you say matu fefe, this is this is the example I gave earlier on. You realize that matu is a noun, and fefe, which serves as a qualifying adjective, comes after the the, the noun matu or book. Okay, so this is a, one of the examples to show that in in Gimokoko, unlike other languages that are either Germanic or European or Indo, uh, you know, uh, how do you call them now, Romance, uh, well, Romance languages uh, function like Gimokoko. Uh, I don't want to go to French and Spanish, but they do function like my, my mother tongue, i.e. the adjectives come after the noun. But let's stick with my mother tongue here because we can go linguistically confused right now. Uh, so the second example would be, uh, uh, for example, which means this man, uh, uh, sir, ma'am, uh, is a lazy person. As you can see, uh, good friends, the word, the word um, it, it comes it comes is the adjective that describes the person the word is the man and comes comes after which is an adjective okay um uh, again as I said earlier um if I if we put uh, back a yacht back a yacht uh, suddenly um comes after after the uh, the noun va, which is which is uh, which which is which is the noun there, uh, it, it, we can multiply these these examples. Uh, we can even talk, as I said earlier, we can talk about colors. You say uh, in with black house, or, you know. Um, you can say wukundu, uh, uh, which is an old man. Uh, you can say for uh, uh, which is a new job. For is work or job and fifth is is new uh as you can see regardless of what we're doing here we're, we're putting the adjectives after work and do that's you know man and do is is old for fifth is new job which is you see fifth comes after the noun for want want you know uh, which is a short person were is person and then uh, tun tun is short uh, okay, is a woman in my mother tongue, and dunna, you know, uh, is the adjective that tells you about the height of the woman. Um, uh, you know, uh, that njia is house, njia is house, and kweta describes the house, which means it's a big house. Njia titi, you know, njia again is house, like I said earlier, and titi is small, so kweta big and tt is small so you can see these are contrastive adjectives in my mother tongue and you can talk about a, 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 a you know ndikumbu which is a, a red dress you know ndikumbu d is dress and kumbu is red you know so regardless i'm giving you uh, dear listeners i'm giving you these examples to let you know that um unlike uh, you know uh, uh, romance languages which i e french uh, French, Spanish, Italian, Portuguese, and a few other. I think uh, Indonesian is is part of that uh, that group, where adjectives come um, after, like the mangimikoka. Most adjectives um, would, in other languages, I mean, other languages will have adjectives coming after. Okay. So uh, one last thing before I let you go, I'm looking at my, my video, it's, it's getting a little long there. Um, one other thing that I want to let you guys know uh, is that there's um, uh, adjectives agree, uh, uh, do not agree in, um, in number and gender, okay? The number does not uh, affect the adjectives the gender does not affect the adjectives i'm going to give you examples okay 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 that's a lazy woman okay is woman and ruhuba is laziness you see that doesn't change okay 
Then you go to Wulun Buru. It's the same thing, gentlemen. We've changed the gender of the noun because Wulun is a man and Woke is, 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 is a woman, but the word, the adjective Buru doesn't change. In Gimakoko, we say Woke Buru. Wulun Buru. It doesn't change. It's Buru. Buru all through. Okay, so uh, I'm going to give you another example. Matufefe, that's one single car. Bumatufefe, well, the pronunciation changed a little bit. But you see that fefe doesn't really change in terms of, uh, or, you know, or, uh, uh, plurality. It's okay. Vakayo. Uh, Vakayo. Vabayo. You see, there's a little bit of a tonal difference in the in the plural in the pluralization of the adjective. But see, this is this is a language that is very tonal. And therefore, if you play, if you don't pay particular attention to the to the intonation, you can come up with some very, very uh, outlandish pronunciations uh, in English. Okay. And so this should do it, uh, uh, dear listeners, good friends, my uh, fellow countrymen and women out there. I hope this gives this video, this little lesson on the function of adjectives in Ngebe uh, It does sit well with you and that you have understood what is going on uh, in, in terms of how we use what, first of all, what are adjectives in our mother tongue, how are they used in, in our mother, in discourses, how did they, they, they differ or how similar are they uh, when you um, when you uh, use them across genders and when you use them with multiplicity of, of, of nouns? In the next video, I'll be looking at, uh, I should be looking at uh, possessive adjectives, if, you know, uh, to be able to give you some more uh, info on what's going on. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, uh, subscribers. I do love your presence. Please listen to this video uh, intently. Uh, make your comments, like or dislike. And uh, if you have questions, be sure to leave a word uh, at the bottom of the of the video, so that when I do visit the, my website in the uh, next time, I'll be able to respond to your questions. God bless you and stay tuned to my to my forum. Bye bye.